Okay. Uh, evening. My name is Hazro. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of the WordPress user group. Um, and I run ALM group. Uh, we are a multidisciplinary e-commerce agency uh, whereby we merge the disciplines of uh, technology, um, marketing and logistics to assist our customers to uh, succeed in their e-commerce business. So today I'll be um, talking about WordPress as a service. Um, it's a very basic, simple introduction about um, WordPress on the cloud. Okay, and uh, what are the kinds of services that you can use with uh, with WordPress as a service? Okay, so um, this is the table of content. Okay, first I need to uh, get some basics out. What is software as a service? Right? Who knows what it is? Okay, so well, the front row probably knows what it is. Okay, why you might want to use a WordPress uh, SaaS? And uh, these are the three examples. One of it is my own SaaS. Okay, so uh, basically, software as a service, uh, software li licensing <coughs> model, right? Uh, is generally just leasing software uh, that is hosted somewhere else. So you don't own the software. Uh, you have the license to use it uh, on a subscription basis. Okay, so it's often de defined as on-demand software. Uh, examples of software as a service, probably you might uh, know them. Okay, uh, software as a service, just like. Um, Simply CRM, right? Uh, WordPress.com is also a software as a service. Okay, so if, if you've been to WordPress.com, uh, you sign up for a blog, basically that's software as a service. So you don't own WordPress, right? Then there's another variation of WordPress where the, the we go to WordPress.org and then you download uh, WordPress and install it on your server. That's not software as a service, that's basically doing it yourself. Okay? So, um, why you might want to use WordPress as a service? Well, basically, uh, back in those days, all right, uh, when a customer comes to me, hey, I want to build a website, all right. So I have to, uh, they have to spend some money on me. Uh, basically, just a few grand. I don't charge very low, <laughs> so um, they tend to uh, get surprised. Oh, but the number is just quite expensive. Yeah, okay. So um, some of the problems is if they manage to spend some money on me then um, I will have to build a customized solution, right? And then um, as and when they need help, all right? Sometimes most of these are technical noobs. Even though for us WordPress is pretty easy, you go to the dashboard, you make some changes and then that's it. But really some of them cannot navigate around WordPress for some God knows what reason. So we have to do it for them, okay? Um, then there are certain changes that you need to make and all these kind of stuff. Oh, big headache, all right? So software, WordPress as a service, okay? Uh, is a solution typically whereby you know it's all in one. You take care of the. Uh, you don't need to take care of the hosting. You don't need to take care of the security. You don't need to take care of the upgrades. Um, you don't need to take care of all the things technical. All you need to focus on is either your content, your marketing campaigns, or your business. All right. So these are a few examples. Okay, mine is this one at the top, Risky. Okay, I'll I'll go through a few of them. All right. So this is Happy Tables. Happy Tables is running on top of WordPress. Just to prove to you that it's running on top of WordPress, I'll go to build with. Okay. And type Happy Tables. All right. Okay, see there, it's WordPress. Okay, 4.3. Okay, so what does Happy Tables do? Well, uh, they create a restaurant website, okay, easily. So if you are a restauranter, uh, you own your own restaurant, uh, and typically these guys, they are too busy. I got a friend who is at uh, Arab Street, he runs his own restaurant, he doesn't have a website. Why? No time. Simply, it's as simple as that, they re literally don't have the time. They go in at 7, they knock off at 11, that's it. There's no time to update the website. Okay, so if you have something at WordPress, it's still too much for them. All right. So what do we do? Uh, well, this uh, this product is made by uh, Human Made. It's one of uh, Automatic's partners. If you are 
uh, in the US or the UK and you need custom development, you go to human made. So we made human made made this product made by humans. Uh. So um, what you can do? Well, they have a customized back end. So you don't when you enter the back end, it doesn't look like WordPress at all. All right. And then on top of that, they have a drag and drop builder. Okay. So let's quickly um, sign up. Uh, All right, so let's open Hacker Space Restaurant. Okay, uh, I am the chef, and I have to sign up. Okay, create a site, choose a plan. I'm gonna click this. Okay, so they have first been a free trial. <laughs> <laughs> I really want to choose this. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna go. Yeah, almost right. Just one more step, then I'm done. <laughs> 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 Sorry? You can change it to a password field. Change it to a password field? Yeah, the inspect. Oh, the one? Password field. That, that, that form is on Stripe. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's right. Alright, so I'm on the dashboard anyway because I refuse to subscribe. <laughs> so this is what it looks like. Alright, so a very customized dashboard. Um, on the first time you log in, you, you, you are really, you know, uh, surprised by it. You don't think that it looks like WordPress at all. Okay, so it's very easy. Um, you basically, you type in your business details, okay. Um, Alright, I'm happy with this. Uh, I'll put my number here. Okay, nine one two three. Okay, where, oh, it's 24 hours, right? <laughs> um, I'll have some... Social media. Save that. Okay, <coughs> then, well, add pages. All right. So now you can do this on the back end. But what you really want to do is go to the front end and make some changes. All right. So this, this is the front end. Okay, they give you a tutorial next. Okay, tell you what's that, tell you what's over here. Alright. Okay, so you can customize the blocks and some content blocks over there. Alright. Okay, so what can you do here? So edit. Alright, and then Let's have some nice uh, pastries. I'm just going to grab and go. Okay, let's confirm that first. Edit here. Right, so it's very simple, easy to use. Uh, the free account is a one-page website. Okay, uh, on the free trial and the thirteen dollars a month, basically you can add multiple pages. All right, so it's more than one page, but on the free account you can just get one page. Okay, other than that, um, for the free account they'll add uh, powered by Happy Tables. All right, if you subscribe, they'll take off uh, that uh, credit. Okay. So, uh, here's some of the fun things that you can probably do. You can add your own menu. Okay, so this is a custom post type. All right, so add uh, all kinds of menus that you want. You can add your own PDF menu if you want to. Okay, um, you can organize your own event for your restaurant. So, if you, if you have like a wine tasting event, you can probably do it there. Okay. Um, 
the nice thing about Happy Tables is they have their own newsletter system. So you might not need to use MailChimp, right? It's all integrated inside. <coughs> and these are some of the integrations that they have. So they got a lot of uh, table booking systems that you can integrate with. All right, Grubhub, okay, and things like that. So basically, FNB related stuff. Okay, so that's pretty much Happy Tables. Happy Tables is one of the pioneers in this space. All right. Um, so let's hop over to. Uh, the other guy, Restaurant Engine. Now, Restaurant Engine is Happy Tables competitor, lah, obviously. Okay, so they are uh, slightly later into the game. As you can see, their website is not as polished as Happy Tables. All right. Um, but however, the one thing that I don't like about uh, Restaurant Engine is price. Okay, let's compare the price between these two guys. Uh, happy Tables. Price. Okay, so you got zero dollars, so you got thirty nine, and then you got coming soon, probably fifty nine or seventy nine, something like that. Restaurant engine set up one nine nine, one nine nine, and then you pay ninety nine dollars a month if you want a uh, website and marketing support and uh, technical support, um, and then uh, you know if you want something less than that, website and additional technical support. Okay, then we got uh, all the a la carte stuff. You know, add online ordering, basically your food panda over here. All right. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Problem is that I can't do a, a quick demo, but what you can do, however, is that there's a video. I can just quickly go through the different features that they have. All right. I'm not going to play the entire video. It's 20 minutes long. Who wants to listen to 20 minutes videos? It's very bad onboarding of the customer. Actually, no, no customer is going to sit to 20 20 minutes of of you know. Selling your koyo, really, truly, right? Like, hey, uh, this my product is awesome for 20 minutes. Nobody wants to do that, right? So, um, what will my website look like? Okay, so it will look pretty neat. Okay, so there's a location, make a reservation. All right, this is how the organize the page. It's pretty similar to Happy Restaurant, uh, Happy Tables. It's not that different. Okay. Um, but I think we want to pop over to the admin screens. All right. Yes. Okay. Sure. Increase sales by that much. All right. Okay. So this is the food panda thing. Check out. Check out. And then you get your orders. Okay. Yeah. yeah this is why we don't do this kind of demos. Crazy. Okay, it's about there. All right, then that's setting up your site. Oh, so you asked me to sign up. Okay, we're not going to do that. All right, but basically, it should be about the same as Happy Tables, more or less. All right, I think Happy Happy Tables is slightly better than that. Okay, um, this is mine. Um, I just launched the Open Beta 2.0 version today. Yeah, just launched it today. Um, it was around for about a year already. Okay, so um, why I decided to do this was uh, it was a dream of mine. I really wanted to do this for too long. So I thought there was a better way to do WordPress, and I thought my customers deserve it too. Okay, so the problem uh, that I typically face. Um, Building websites is that you know it's just too much time wasting, all right. Why not just give the customer everything, let them do it themselves, as long as we give them the tools, okay? So um, what I did was I decided, hey, let's build my own WordPress as a service. Um, it's basically a WordPress multi-site, similar to Happy Tables and Restaurant Engine. So they all behave like WordPress. They are actually WordPress multi-site installs, okay. Uh, and then they add on their own customization. So mine is my own customization plus, plus a few premium plugins. Okay. So by default for me is that what I decided to do was that hey, e-commerce is in the in thing now. I would just uh, pre-activate WooCommerce on every sign up. Okay. And then uh, the nice thing is that hey, I got my own drag and drop builder. Hey, so now no but no customer will call me and tell me what to do or ask me to do something. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and these are some of my happy customers here. All right. So, um, quick, quick glance of the features 
Rack and Drop Builder. Uh, one thing that some people ask me, why why do you do commerce anyway? Okay, so some nice statistics: forty three percent of sites in Singapore run on WooCommerce, right? Any e commerce site in particular. So uh, around the region, thirty percent in Malaysia, fifty one percent in Indonesia. Alright, so when I talk to investors, this is my stats lah. Okay, typically these are the sites that are not running as a service. Okay, and lots of these are small businesses which probably don't have the time. Right, most likely they have uh, WordPress that are outdated, uh, not upgraded, and so on. So we take care of all this for them. Okay, so um, yeah, another thing is your data is always yours. I I think if, uh, for e-commerce, if you're on Shopify, typically when you want to grow out Shopify, there are a few cases. Um, it's very hard to move your data. Okay, yeah? number one, number one, number two is very hard to move your design. Right, probably you have to redesign everything. But with because it's WordPress, basically you can just export the template out. Okay, so uh, what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna log into Risky. Um, I show you uh, the backend. Oh no, I think I'll show you. A, a demo account rather than my admin account, yeah? yeah. Mm. Oh, this to me. Hold on. Why is supposed to be faster? <laughs> okay, so if you're on um, a subscriber account, this is what you see. Okay, so this typically what you, what you see, right? Uh, subscriptions is when you have uh, more than one site. Okay, and there's a premium. Premium basically, you know, you want to do more things like marketing and so on. So I got all these extra services for you. All right. So. The risky backend is just to manage your accounts and to create new sites. Right? If you go to your individual sites, then that's where you uh, uh, build your website. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the demo site. Okay, got, got something running there. Okay, so I log in here. So typically when you start a site, uh, this base site is uh, immediately created. I wrote my own template and then automatically just piece things together. Then when you come in, you just play the wizard and then uh, your site is put together very fast. Okay, so we go over to the home. Right, so this is the uh, page that was uh, created with the page builder. And I'll just start with the page builder over here. Alright, so now page builder is already loaded. That was quite fast. Templates. Okay, so the, the nice thing about my page builder is that uh, when you create a site, you can save it as a template so that you can reload it later, right, and, and play it around. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, replace the layout. Okay, load it. And done. Okay, so immediate. Immediate side, then you can change all this lah. Okay, so you want to change this. Try to change. You click on this one first. There you go. Okay, and up the health change your life. Uh, oh. All right. Okay. Save it. Okay. You got an app? Can point it there.
right so pick up stuff from the media library or you can just upload so the interface is very similar to WordPress nothing different okay Wrong file uploaded. Huh? Yeah, that's a HTML file. So it's actually already uploaded, it's just crunching to make it smaller. Got another plugin there that tries to crunch the images. Okay, so reduce by 342 KB. Save. Okay, you can see pictures all change. Right, you want to add content block. Uh, sorry. Okay. Open again. Make this big. All right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Let's not change that. Okay. So you got all kinds of stuff here. Okay. You can change all this. that done so to save everything you just need to click on done over there at the top okay publish those changes and it oh refresh the cache <laughs> yep there you go okay uh, remember I was doing uh, e-commerce all right, so you just click on shop. You already had a product over there. And this is just the same thing, you know. It's just like any WooCommerce site. Okay. Add to cart, check out, and uh, basically it's all, all that flow. All right. The, the difference is that now you got a page builder. Now, you know, uh, end users can just go in, drag and drop, design however they want to design. The only thing, the only time they disturb me is usually during the beginning during the onboarding process whereby they are not pretty sure about where the menus are on the back end uh, on the front end usually it's a bit easier to do right uh, but the back end usually a lot of uh, newbies typically are struggling with the WordPress back end right uh, so these these are just some examples of WordPress as a service there's a lot of examples of WordPress as a service okay uh, for example there's a book press book press I think um, hold on. Press as a service. Uh, there's one article going around. Probably gives you a few things. Ah, there you go. There's one of the uh, usage of WordPress as a service. Okay. Happy tables. Uh, hello bar. Okay, press books. Right. So press books. Let's go to press books. All right. So you can create your own ebook. So the Backend of this thing is also WordPress, right? And you can make your own ebook, right? So uh, typically, if you are going to create an ebook, you have to figure out as a, an ebook software, then add things together and so on. But uh, they have their own interface, um, and the pricing is, I think, pretty affordable to make your own ebook. Yeah. So that's pretty much it. WordPress as a service, very simple. Any questions about uh, WordPress as a service? Mm, this is a very good question. Um, 
I get. I guess it depends on how you design your infra. Uh, for example, WordPress.com is also a WordPress multi-site, but there are hundreds of thousands of sites over there. So it's really a lot on how you, you run your infra. Um, in my case, um, I run it on a single Amazon instance. Um, for now, it's okay. But typically, that's how WordPress.com started anyway. They were running on a shared, shared hosting, and then progressively, they, they were uh, using a VPS, and then later on, and so on, and so on. So uh, start small, I guess. I think the moment you hit 1,000, probably you might see some noticeable lag. 1,000 sites, and uh, figure out how to scale from there. Lah. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I need to add is that for Happy Tables, for Restaurant Engine, one account equals one website. Alright, uh, for me, uh, one account, multiple websites, but each site got price lah. Alright, so uh, depends on um, uh, all the different kind of services like WordPress.com is also the same, one account, multiple sites, right? Um, so typically, of course, there are multiple accounts lah. Um, any other questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, one question, right? When you offer your customer tools to build their own website, often mm. time they will come. Uh, they have their own requirement, which uh, is currently unfulfilled. So my question is that, how do you go about interviewing your customers to find out what are the next features to build to the moment? Okay, that's a very nice question, actually. Um, so, I usually visit my customers uh, once every two months. Um, they always have something. Physically. Yeah. So, um, they always have something in mind that they want to add onto the website. If the feature is not there yet, I will think about it and then I will decide whether I want to add it inside the roadmap. If it's something simple, uh, you know, hey, Azrul, add, you know, uh, fundraising module. Um, I decided to write my own fundraising module after that and then uh, let them play with uh, the system by themselves. So I would typically do that for free first, test it, make sure that it's okay. Um, if it serves the market need, and then I will monetize it later on, right? It has to be a future which is worth monetizing, lah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in my case, I realized that um, a lot of my customers wanted fundraising module. Alright, so I had to uh, write it. I had to write the payment gate uh, payment gateways that serve Singapore market as well. Uh, because apparently PayPal doesn't allow uh, non-profits in Singapore to have a PayPal account. Yeah, so uh, you have to work with local payment gateways, so you have to wrap payment gateways plugins. Oh yeah, before that actually, uh, here's a nice example of how we integrate with local payments, right? So let's go to the back end. Uh, we support SmoothPay, uh, PayPal and Xverse, which presented last month, okay? So, if you were to go to the settings, anybody try Xpress yet? Okay, anybody does not have an Xpress account? Does not. Xpress. Okay. So, Xpress uh, is is an internet banking uh, service. All right. Hey, okay, probably see this. Okay. So, yep. So the the are uh, a local payment gateway that does internet banking. Okay. So. Literally, they are like kind of competing with Enets in that sense. All right, uh, then they are quite new. I think their latest round of funding was about twenty-five, I think, twenty-five million. I remember. Yeah, uh, quite recent. Yeah. So uh, I've been working with them for about uh, a year plus. Yeah, uh, writing on their on their APIs lah. So so I improved on some of their APIs as well. Um, okay. So Xverse. Now, if you go to Access website, they have their own WooCommerce plugin. Uh, I basically um, made it better, and it's only exclusively on uh, <laughs> Risky, alright. So what I did was that uh, if, if you you see the uh, Express WooCommerce plugin, it looks slightly different because I I have the Sandbox API key, Sandbox API secret, Live API key, Live API secret. If you use the um, Express WooCommerce plugin, which is the official one. All right, uh, it's slightly more technical, just slightly more technical. Right, you can see. Uh, okay, you have to log in, and then you have to log into as well. You have to get your API key. You have to get your API secret. All right, uh, install, activate, uh, live demo. Okay, here's a live demo.
ah doesn't show that but particular back end oh here you go this particular tutorial all right um Experts, then not experts. I can see the the UI is slightly different because the news uh, payment URL. I didn't get why they did that, uh, but then I realized it's because that they wanted to point sandbox and live. So if you, you wanted to switch to live, then you have to type the www.experts.io instead. Then you had to save it. So I, I thought it was a additional step. Another thing is that uh, you have to go to experts uh, and then you have to uh, sign up yourself. And then go through all the API key and you know get it yourself and figure it out. So what I did was uh, instead of doing all that, um, I decided to have a way to just sign up very easily. Um, let's please send box email address. Um, okay. Then press that. And then automatically grab the API key and the API secret. All right. And once you're done, you save it. Okay. So what happens here is that uh, it goes through the registration API. Uh, you'll get an email, right, asking you to activate Express. And then you activate it. And then you have to go through a few things like OTP and so on. And then it's finally activated. But in this case, uh, what I did was, you know, just uh, uh, start an Express account, put in your email address, click, and then get the API key API secret immediately so you don't need to go through that step right you just need to activate your account and that's pretty much it okay um, yeah that's how we integrate your local guys yeah if there are any payment gateways that you know that I don't know <laughs> I only know these two so far <laughs> alright then let me know I would like to integrate with them as well okay any other questions I have a basic one I'm kind of new, so pardon the simple question. When you have customers that go to your wiki, do you find them worrying about their content in you? Sir, can you repeat that again? Sir. If, if I'm a customer, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the, of the, 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 the company, I got to put my content into your into your site, yes? Mm -hmm. I mean, basically, right? You run it as a service. So a lot of what I I do, the company do, would be, would be in your domain knowledge. You would control all the information. Do you find them resistant to, to that? Ah, privacy issues. Ah, privacy issues. Like, you know everything. That's, okay. that's a good concern. Um, but uh, I think you shouldn't be worried about us having control knowledge. I mean, if, if it's WordPress.com, if it's automatic, they will also know, you know. Uh, You're running an e-commerce. Ah, that's also true. Um, but then again, if you have happy tables, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. I, 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 I think, I think. Resistance to Some. Not all. Uh, what I usually tell them is that uh, I may know your stuff, but I'm not interested in your business, right? Um, some of your competitors maybe with me, but they don't know your account, all right? So every uh, work work commerce is in such a way whereby it's a silo, so it's different tables. So even they are able to hack is very hard, all right? You have to figure out which table is which. Too big. Yeah. It's not a WordPress question, but how do you convince someone who is planning to use Shopify to, to your to your website? Okay, great question. Um, if you are using Shopify, um, have you have you tried Shopify before? Okay, so um, you start off with a basic site, right? Nine ninety per month. Okay, and then um, you want to customize your site. Okay, how do you customize it? You go to templates, right? Okay. Which will possible more if I want a premium one. Exactly. So, uh, how do you play around the templates? Do you see HTML and CSS? Or is it a drag and drop builder? One. HTML. HTML, right? A little bit. Okay. A little bit HTML. So, most of my customers that started out with Shopify, they got stuck there. Uh -huh. Because they have no idea what HTML and CSS is. Right? And then I say, hey, look. Drag and drop. Pretty simple, right? Um, I think that should be the way to go. A lot of the uh, e-commerce software service like Shopify, Big Commerce, I think this big too, Magento event, but that's for enterprise, so it really doesn't matter. Um, don't have that flexibility or, or that particular UI to help them, uh, to help the end user customers uh, to build their own site. Yeah. Uh, it's 
I would say that Shopify and big commerce are a medium tier. It's not a basic tier software service. Magento is of course the highest tier lah, right? So I, I would say that these are the medium tiers. Uh, maybe if you're a medium-sized business, you have an IT department, somebody inside your company that has HTML knowledge, you're pretty okay, right? Uh, but if you're if you're just starting out, and most of my uh, peers are starting out doing small business, they want to have a website, but they have no idea how to build, so they go to Wix. Go to Wix, okay. Here's a website I created, and oh my god, it's fugly, right? <laughs> and they want to cut into payment gateway. The only ones that's available is PayPal, right? So um, instead of that, you know, why not sign up here? You risky. You got your own WordPress site, um, and then you have payment gateways. That's not only PayPal. That's X first. That's Move Pay. Okay. But Express is only <coughs> in Singapore. Right? Yeah, it's only for but, Singapore. But your consumers are. Well, only I'm, I'm currently uh, just pushing it for Singapore first. Oh, yeah, so okay. it works for me right now. Of course, uh, the roadmap is uh, ASEAN. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, you use Visual Composer before, right? Yeah, it sucks. <laughs> Why? Uh, no? Visual Composer. Yeah, it's very slow. A lot of JavaScript back, back there, right? So uh, the one thing that that I experienced with Visual Composer is that um, it tends to load multiple times, and then you see multiple uh, elements popping up, and then you have to delete it again and you save it again. It's very very frustrating to work with Visual Composer. Uh, no, I mean, we move at such a pace whereby if it's too slow, let's move to a different tool, right? So... What's the better alternative then? Uh, risky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think drag and drop, drag and drop tools is a slightly different presentation. Um, probably you might want to look around. If you if you Google out uh, some of these tutorials or articles on, 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 the, on the net, you probably could find a comparison Article whereby they compare between Visual Composer, MotoPress, uh, DV. DV is one of the more popular ones, yeah, and so on, and so on. Most of these are back end, back end admin. It's not a front end. Right. It's not a front end. Those that are front end typically are working as a team, right? Uh, my builder is not a team; it's a plugin, so it works with any team, right? So, um, lots of those that uh, are very nice drag and drop teams, they're very good. They're really, really good. Problem is that um, they are they are only in that team. It's not a plugin, so it's you know you can't port your design out. That's one of the problems that I, that I see. I think yeah. Just <coughs> yeah, they did. So DV came out with another plugin, all right, uh, which is uh, available for any team as well. Um, but yeah, it's it's a backend backend admin, right? You play around on the backend rather than the front end. Yeah, so we aren't able to visualize content block. Content block is a bit hard to see. Um, I foresee WordPress.com after they acquire WooCommerce going towards this direction. <laughs> uh, really, I really don't care lah. I want to do that, but I foresee that's what they might be doing. Um, but uh, I don't know. They're going a few places. They're trying to do APIs and trying to do this. I'm not so sure. So. Uh, WooCommerce at this part of time just exists as another company within Automatic, so it's still business as usual. Uh, but I'm pretty surprised, you know, they didn't do WooCommerce as a service, right? So hey, I'm the first one to do WooCommerce as a service. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any other questions? I think uh, it's already eight thirty nine. Yes. I just, uh, I just exploring and I'm uh, beginning. Does Redkey's uh, going to support like Google Google Chrome notifications also? Oh. Because uh, majority also use Google. I don't. I don't have this in my roadmap yet. Oh. Yeah. Right. Because I saw quite some that has Google notifications. Okay. Why do you want to use Google notifications? Like maybe business owners sometimes they will want people when people buy something. Oh, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah. Then right. uh, when you have uh, like uh, some delivery order numbers or something, they will notify them, they will check. Mm -hmm. 
if it's a mobile site, mm. because okay. it's not an app itself. So right. People use mobile sites. Yeah. yeah, about 53% of e-commerce transactions are on the mobile web. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll think about it. Uh, yeah, it, it didn't, it didn't come to my mind before. Yeah. yeah, I'll think about it. I'll, I'll ask around my customers when they want this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wondering because it's going to Any other questions? Not just risky, but any other, you know, uh, WordPress software service that you might want to to um, explore. Yeah, um, I'm more interested in how, how you do this. Oh. <laughs> 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 uh, a lot of it is PNC. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's, I'm, I'm doing this mostly alone. The, the technical guy is just mostly me. Um, so in in order to get the minimum viable product out, I basically uh, bought a few premium plugins to help me out get things done a bit more faster, right? Um, and then when Those I see the plugins are PNC as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, on top of that, you know, if I if I like that plugin, I want to uh, expand on it. I write extra code, right? I write another plugin to add additional features to that plugin. Yeah. Some of the plugins like WooCommerce, like I I like I like to write a lot more payment gateway plugins. So there's a few modules like Event Manager. Event Manager plugin is one of those that installed, so I bought the event, event Manager Pro, right? So you don't need to buy your own Event Manager Pro license, lah, right? So it's just lease it out from me, and then um, I wrote plugins, uh, payment gateway plugins for that, and then there's a few things I did with that as well. So mostly yeah. plugin developments. Mostly plugin developments and team development, right? So I w I want people to start off on a standard team, right? Uh, initially I, you know, go crazy, hundreds of teams, and I realized that, you know, customers typically don't know what to choose right so I, I decided let's just uh, leave it to two teams if you're on the free plan if you're a starter there's about nine teams you can choose from uh, but what's more important is the page builder lah, right? because page builder I think is, is the one that really elevates um, WordPress as a whole as a unit you know okay. yeah so you did the whole thing yourself no yeah with the support of some premium plugins <laughs> <laughs> yeah on and off a whole year. I've been doing this for two years now. Two years. Yeah. So the first year, first year there was no risky. First year I was something else. Uh -huh. um, and then I had to pivot like I think four, five, six times. And then by the beginning of last year, I started risky. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Please sign up. <laughs> um. Okay, so if you wish to contact me, you can email me at this email address. You can go to my Facebook page and tweet me. I don't usually use Twitter, but I'll get notifications. So I'll, I'll respond to that as well. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs>